Okay, so uh, in this video, what I want to do is give you a walkthrough of what an annotated bibliography for this class should look like. Uh, you will have uh, five sources that you'll be uh, including in your annotated bibliography, and that information is available on the Canvas assignment. Um, what this video is going to do is just show you what the parts of your annotated bibliography are and should be so that you can do yours successfully. So an annotated bibliography has a particular form, okay? Um, it is double spaced throughout, it has a title, uh, and then it uses, instead of regular paragraph indentation, it uses something called hanging indentation. It's sort of a reverse indentation, okay? um, where the, the big chunk sort of hangs um, away from the margin. Okay, um, Your annotated entries are all in one document and they are ordered alphabetically by last name. Okay, So Parks is the last one, Mellencamp is the second one, and Dalton is the first one. Okay, So your annotated bibliography has a header, right? Um, that you should, you know, it's pretty pretty familiar to everybody, except in, instead of sample here, you put your class name, okay? It has a title, annotated bibliography, and then your broad topic, okay? Uh, this annotated bibliography has three entries, um, and each entry ha has the same um, format, okay? So I'm just going to walk you through with this one, the first one, as an example and just show you a few other details from the others um, when they become relevant. So this first part here is called the bibliographic entry. Okay, It looks exactly like an entry in your Works Cited page. Okay, um, So uh, the same way you use hanging indentation in your regular Works Cited page, you use a hanging indentation here. It's just that you also hang um, the rest of the annotation as well. Um, make sure that your MLA formatted bibliographic entry is in MLA 8 format, all right? Uh, if you need help with that, you can Google that. The OWL at Purdue has a great, uh, has great resources, okay? Um, I think I was just looking at it for myself over here, okay? Uh, so this is an OWL um, Purdue site for MLA formatting and style guide. Please ignore this citation machine thing. It's really just, it's simple enough just to do this, right? Um, you can also work with the uh, citation that is generated from the MLA International Bibliography, but just do be sure that you uh, double check it, okay? Sometimes things like title caps, right, are not correct, and sometimes the commas are not correct, and so on, okay? Um, Okay, so let's go back to our annotated bibliography. So the first section is always the bibliographic entry. Okay, so there's one, here's the other. These are both um, essays from books. Okay, and here is one from a journal article. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so this next part is the actual annotation itself. Now for our purposes, um, we just really need one good chunky paragraph, okay? Um, if you can do it in one paragraph, that's perfect. If you need a, a longer paragraph in order to do it, that's also fine. Um, if you feel more comfortable separating it into two paragraphs um, with your sense of how the essay is going to be useful for you um, in a separate paragraph, that's totally fine, okay? But it should be a good chunky paragraph at the very least, okay? And there are two parts to an annotation. The first part um, is this part, and that is the summary of the source, okay? And then the second part is your assessment of how you're going to use it, and what particularly you find useful about it. Uh, so the first part, the summary part, be sure that you are being accurate about the actual content of the argument. Okay, um, this is not a description of what the art of what the essay contains. It talks about this, and then it talks about this, and then it talks about this. This is a, a summary of the author's argument. Okay, so. Make sure that you start with a clear statement of what the thing is that you're working with in this essay from a collection of essays about sitcoms. 
uh, in this essay from an edited collection of academic essays um, uh, in this article, okay? Scholarly journal article. Make sure you tell us what it is, okay? You use the author's last name um, after the first time you've used the author's full name. Here, the author's full name is in appearance, so just use the author's last name, okay? All remaining times. Uh, so the first part of this is a basic assessment of what the author's broad topic is, um, comparing male teachers and female teachers as characters on TV. Uh, and then we have the thesis, okay? Uh, she argues that female teachers are not afforded rich personal lives. They're usually married and childless and encouraged to be nurturing but not motherly towards students. Um, you might notice that this uh, example uses citations, okay, for direct and uh, indirect quotations, right? You should be using the same thing. Okay, be sure that you're pointing to specific places in the text, right? Um, and then the last part of the summary is an assessment of a summary of um, the most important subpoints or claims that the author has made in support of her argument. And again, use paraphrases that you cite. So um, this author um, has gone into particular examples that are used and um, gives an overview of um, her own counter argument, okay? And then the last section, which as I mentioned, if you'd like to make this a separate paragraph, feel free. Uh, it doesn't need to be. Um, and if you need to take longer than, say, this amount of space to do your summary effectively, feel free, okay? Being concise in summaries can be very, very challenging. So if you need a little bit of extra space, feel free to take it. Um, this last part is an assessment of how this essay or how this source is going to be useful to you, okay? And in this case, you should be as specific as possible. Um, so this essay is useful because it offers feminist analysis of a relevant text and is open to ideological analysis of this character as both socially acceptable female teacher and the female trickster described at the end of the essay. So this is a broad overview of how this author is particularly, how this student author is in particular going to use this essay. And she's going to use it to help it with, uh, sort of to help the feminist analysis and these particular um, readings of that, of that uh, character. Okay. You, you may want to consider um, adding into your, <coughs> excuse me, um, you may want to consider adding into your assessment of the of the, the source a brief statement of where in your draft essay you think these ideas are going to be most relevant to you. This helps you with organization. Okay, so something like um, I plan to use the feminist analysis as part of my opening introduction and the readings of the character will be woven into my own analysis. Okay, and this kind of thing um, just helps you with uh, your sense of planning. Okay, it's really very important to do something like this as much as possible in your annotated bibliography. This author didn't, okay, um, and uh, that's a that's a weakness in this annotation. Okay, uh, and then we move on to the next one again in alphabetical order, right? Uh, and then the last one, also in alphabetical order, and this is a scholarly journal article, okay? Um, so this is what an annotated bibliography looks like. Uh, yours is, uh, of course, going to be on Jane Austen rather than, um, rather than uh, working women in 1950s American sitcoms, but do make sure you put a broad sense of your topic up here so that I know how all of these things are meant to hang together. The assessment and other details of the annotated bibliography assignment are all available for you in Canvas. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll look forward to seeing what you come up with. Thanks.